I want to talk today about something that I think is genuinely incredible. No, not the massive interconnected cinematic universe that Marvel have fashioned for themselves, though that is pretty amazing too. I want to talk about something else. Marvel managed to take a character with old-fashioned values and beliefs and make us like him. A character who on face value represents American iconography and culture. A cheesy relic of a sentimental era that disappeared a long time ago. That character is Captain America. DC also have a character who represents all the same challenges and also represents the same old-fashioned values, yet they have failed to adapt him for a modern time. Thus far, mass audiences have not accepted the new modern Superman, but Marvel have done such a good job with Cap that it's actually pretty hard to find someone who doesn't at the very least accept him, but most of the time, they like him. Before the release of the first Avenger, I was very skeptical that modern and non-American audiences would accept a character adorned with their flag as anything other than the propaganda which he started as. I should stress here, I'm an enormous Cap fan. When I was growing up, this was one of my favourite cartoons. When Captain America throws his mighty shield, all those who chose to oppose his shield must yield. If he's led to a fight and a duel is due, then the red and the white and the blue will come through when Captain America throws his mighty shield. As a kid, I genuinely built my own core values around those of Steve Rogers. He was my moral compass, and whenever I was challenged with a moral quandary, I'd ask, what would Steve Rogers do? So when I say that I expected a Captain America film to bomb harder than Waterworld, you can believe it's hard for me to say. When the film was eventually released, I went to watch it late at night in a quiet cinema. Sitting close by were two people who were in fact discussing the negative effect of American politics in the Middle East while waiting for the movie to start. I thought that they were there to hate watch what they felt was a cheesy American propaganda film. But something amazing happened. When the movie was finished, I hung around to listen to what they had to say. They loved it and they lauded how well Steve had been written and that he was a lot deeper and aspirational than they first thought. Fast forward 10 years and this cheesy and sentimental propaganda which most people laugh at now became an iconic and layered depiction of a much admired action hero. So how did Marvel take a character wearing an American flag called Captain America and make him relatable and likeable to everyone? Created by Joe Simon and Jack Kirby, Steve began life as a political figure designed to represent the antithesis of Nazism, and his look and name were directly designed to be wartime propaganda. Captain America quickly became a very popular comic, selling one million copies of his very first issue. Once the war had ended though, his popularity began to decrease as many post-war readers tended to find his cheesy iconography to be, well, cheesy. A revival was attempted in the 50s with Cap reimagined as, as a comedy smasher. Um, but that didn't resonate either since most readers just tended to think that the character had lost relevance over the years. During the war, he represented hope and resilience and had a clear enemy. But with the danger now gone, those qualities didn't seem as relevant. He became more popular once he was revived and integrated into the Avengers. They decided to reinvent the character from being an eternal optimist, believing in the good of all and fighting to preserve the world he lived in, to being one who was haunted by the life and world that was stolen from him while he was in suspended animation. A character at odds with the far more flexible morals of the modern world, which challenged his core beliefs. It was during this period that the character was fleshed out a bit more, and he started to resemble a three-dimensional character with a strong moral compass which often conflicted and played off the other more modern Avengers. It established him as a character who believed in being loyal 
standing up for people who couldn't stand up for themselves. He was a supporter of equality and despite his name, often clashed with the American government in favour of the general public. Boiled down to the simplest words, Camp no longer stood for simple anti-Nazism. He embodied the idea of honesty and self, an understanding that we as individuals and as a society are responsible for its worst aspects, and also responsible for correcting them. It would be fair to say that while DC was killing it with their properties in the world of TV and cinema, that Marvel was languishing. Mostly due to the fact that none of the Marvel movies or TV shows were owned or produced by Marvel. They simply sold all of the cinematic and television rights to their characters due to their very precarious financial situation. Cap didn't get many outings, but when he did, they sucked a bag of dicks. Largely because the people making these movies and shows didn't care about the character. They just wanted to use the property and image to make a quick book. There were many rumours over the years of a cat movie in the works, but with Marvel lacking financial muscle and a long-running dispute over the copyright of the character with co-creator Joe Simon, none of these movies came to fruition. It wasn't until 2003 when the copyright issue surrounding the character between Joe Simon and Marvel was finally settled and so talk of a cat movie could start properly. Five years later the movie still hadn't been created but the runaway success of Iron Man had persuaded Disney to shell out a massive amount of money to buy Marvel and in the process give an endless amount of money to the newly created Marvel Studios and that's when the talk of a real movie began. By the time the Cat movie was in pre-production, the general audience had gone through a shift in their perception of heroes. Gone was the appeal for clean-cut morally unambiguous heroes, and badass anti-heroes who played by their own rules and weren't afraid to bend them were on vogue. Cap didn't fit this mould at all, and it was pretty clear that no modern movie featuring the nostalgic wartime Cap would work. One of the smartest decisions that writing duo Marcus and McFeely made was to set the movie in the same period the character began, giving director Joe Johnston the opportunity to present the character in his purest form, without anyone complaining or pointing out that the character felt out of date and out of place. Rather than focusing on the things that Steve could do, we spent almost the first two thirds of the movie with an underweight short weakling. No other superhero movie does this. The question is why? If I were to ask what superpowers Captain America has, you'd maybe answer by saying that he's strong, or that he has amazing endurance, demonic drinking skills, or his world champion frisbee throwing. Maybe you might say that he can take a beating, and you'd almost be right. Steve Rogers' superpower is actually nothing to do with his physical abilities at all, and it's best summed up in this line. I don't want to kill anyone. I don't like bullies. I don't care where they're from. Steve's superpower is strength of character. Marcus and McFeely never once made him a character representing truth or justice, and thus avoided making him a laughable block of cheese. Instead, they focused on the human side of Steve, and at times even chose to eschew the new physical gifts to remind us that it was his spirit and empathy which drives him. Even going as far as to write a whole scene mocking the cheesy nostalgic propaganda Steve, his uneasiness with his status as a symbol of war and propaganda helped audiences feel connected to him, since this was pretty much how everyone outside the comic book community saw this character too. Throughout the movie, they show him as someone who isn't happy to blindly follow what he's told. But when he does his own thing, it's not for revenge, it's not petulance or general disobedience. It's because he has a firm belief that if you can help someone, you should. So when the military says it's too dangerous to mount a rescue mission for his friends, he rejects that and does what he knows he can because he doesn't believe that lives can be traded or discarded. By using his loyalty to his friends, Marcus and McFeely helped us see the good moral core of his character in a way that pretty much everyone can relate to and respect. It's a theme that would be repeated over and over throughout the series. In effect, 
They kept the core of his character while simultaneously stripping away the things which most people would have found tacky. He wasn't an indestructible superhero who easily overpowered his enemies while fighting for truth and justice. The time spent with him in the beginning before he gets beefed up was so that we could see that the only thing that changed about Steve was his body. Both before his physical transformation and after, he was always ready to stand up for people that couldn't stand up for themselves, even when it was actually him that couldn't stand up for himself. Most of the characters become more brave or more altruistic when they receive their abilities or as a result of their abilities. What makes Steve different is that he was always brave and altruistic. At the end of the first Avenger, the movie leaves off at the exact point that his return in the comics occurred, with him being awoken after being frozen for over 60 years. Making Steve work in a time period which lent itself well to his character was still a pretty massive achievement, but it was far easier than making him work in a world that had been rejecting his type of character for years. When Winter Soldier rolled around, the goal then became to make an old-fashioned character relevant in a world without a clear-cut villain. The first Avenger worked so well because he was the clear hero and Nazis were clear villains. It was a simple and classic tale of good versus evil, in which everyone could root for Steve. For Winter Soldier, Marcus and McFeely gave Steve a slight evolution and built on the seeds that had been sown in the first Avenger and Avengers Assemble. Although he faced off against his old pal Bucky, Winter Soldier's antagonist is really the institution that Steve had been working for, S.H.I.E.L.D. Instead of representing 1940s American attitudes, he now represented modern society's skepticism of overarching governmental control and technological paranoia. During Avengers Assemble, Steve had developed a healthy skepticism of the government, and this was reinforced further from the opening scene of Winter Soldier, as Steve learns that he has been manipulated into conducting an espionage mission instead of the rescue mission that he thought it was. This continued throughout the entire film. One of the film's main themes was about questioning the world that we're presented with. In addition to the new skeptical Steve who was more aligned with modern attitudes in some ways, the writers grounded him by also making him both mourn for the world that he lost and also try his best to adapt to the one that he was in. This feeling of not fitting in despite his obvious talents and abilities is something which a lot of people can connect with and relate to and it helped to engender him to audiences who may still not have quite connected with him. At the same time as creating a skeptical man out of time character, they didn't lose his core values and used his loyalty to his friends to help show that he hadn't lost the characteristics which made him admirable previously. They also demonstrated his non-judgmental approach by having him befriend and appreciate Black Widow, a character he should not have trusted in the slightest given her spy past and allegiance to S.H.I.E.L.D. The Winter Soldier did a great job of evolving Steve just enough to move him into modern times, but without losing those old-fashioned values which made him so down-to-earth originally. I think the reason why Captain America's transition to the big screen has been such a phenomenal success, despite the raft of events and circumstances stacked against him, is because from the very beginning Marcus and McFeely wanted to make us respect the man, appreciate his strength of character, and admire his tenacity. His abilities are presented as a tool rather than a defining characteristic. It's his spiritual fortitude, empathy and loyalty which define him as a character. It's those things which make him likeable, relatable and aspirational, not his accuracy thrown a shield. With Chris Evans retiring soon from the role, I can only express the utmost gratitude that he took such care, time and respect for this character. People say that comics and superhero movies are just stories for kids. But stories for kids can have a lasting impact. I started this video by saying that I built my own core beliefs and values around Steve Rogers. I couldn't be more thrilled, pleased and relieved to see that in bringing him to the big screen, Marvel, the writers and Chris Evans never lost what made the character so special to so many.